Greetings everyone and welcome back. This is Marco and today we are taking a look at the Asai Super Takumar 50mm 1.4. The first version of the Super Takumar 50mm 1.4 was launched in 1964 with an 8 elements in 6 groups design. One year later it was updated to 7 elements in 6 groups with improved coatings that included thorium oxide, so yes, this is one of those famous radioactive lenses. Let's take a closer look. The lens is made of metal, it weighs around 220 grams, it is 38 to 45 millimeters long, it has an external diameter of 63 millimeters and a front of 49 millimeters. The iris has six plates, the aperture is clicked and it goes from f1.4 to f16 with half steps. On this side there is a switch for manual automatic aperture control for compatible cameras. The focusing ring has pretty shallow textured dimples, it turns 200 degrees and minimum focusing distance is 45 centimeters. The mount is an M42 with a flange distance of 45.46 millimeters. One minor design issue I have with this lens is that the dimples on the focus and aperture rings are spaced differently, so only two of them align at any given time, which triggers my OCD. Other than that, in classic as a fashion, it is compact, lightweight and very well built. Sharpness wide open is a bit lacking in the center and it falls off a bit more in the corners, with surprisingly close to no vignetting. By f8 it gets sharp all over the frame. Chromatic aberration is visible in high contrast areas and can be noticeable especially wide open. Colors are fairly neutral and contrast and saturation are a bit muted. Specular highlights have some hard edges, chromatic aberration and deform easily if not in the center of the frame. In the right conditions, backgrounds can show some swirliness. While I haven't had any issues with ghosting, it is prone to flaring. As you would expect, it has quite a bit of focus breathing. And now, as always, let me show you some samples.
while I do understand the appeal of this lens, it doesn't really speak to me, mainly because it is inconsistent. It reminds me a lot of the Nippon Kogaku 50mm 1.4 I reviewed a year or so ago. Both of them swing from producing beautiful portraits to being barely usable to shoot a landscape. And I need my lenses to be reliable. It might not be the right lens for me, but it might be the right one for you. So, as always, let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!